Hello friends. Welcome to the interesting session of prediction of the flower species. So, as I explained in the previous video, how we can solve the machine learning problems. So, here is the first example. So, in this data set, we are going to predict the flower species with the given measurements of iris flower. So, this whole thing it is a iris flower data set. So, from the data set, we are having the some input attributes. From that input, input attributes, we are going to predict the that species of the flower. Which type of species is that? Okay. First, I am going to show you the data set. So, it will be very easy for you to understand the problem statement. This is what the data set is look like, looks like. So, these are the four input attributes and this is the output attribute. So, from these type of measurements, we are going to predict which flower is that. So, if it is a 5.1, 3.5, and 1.4, 0 0.2, then if these four uh, values matches, means that flower will be a iris set of some. So, likewise, many values are there, you can see, up to 50 values are there for iris set of some. So, these, if these all uh, measurements match, means that thing will be iris set of some. So, same for the iris versicolor also. If these values are going to match, means that flower is called as the iris versicolor. Like, like this, the data set is made up of. Okay. So, it is consisting of uh, 150 number of uh, rows. And five number of columns you can see this. Okay. Okay. I will move into the this uh, section now. So the first thing we need to understand the problem statement. So here the problem is you can guess the type of problem first. As I explained in my previous video, there are two types of problems are going to occur. The one will be the regression type and another will be the classification type. So here we are predicting the class means it is nothing but a classification problem. So the iris flower data set it is a multi-class classification problem since there are three classes we are predicting. That is one is the iris versicolor and iris virginica and iris setosa. So since three classes are there so it is called as a multi-class classification problem. If it is consist of only two class means we can call it as a binary class or two class problem. So here, the number of observation of each class is balanced. So, as I shown in the data set, it is consisting of the 150 number of rows and uh, 4 number of input attributes and 1 is the output. So, the variable names that we are given for the columns are one is the sepal length and another is the sepal width, petal length and the petal width. So, you can see here, this is, these are the 4 attributes. What I have shown here this sepal length sepal width petal length petal width are the that are named as that for uh, four attributes columns so next will be the class that is nothing but the output column so that is iris setosa is for secular iris virginica so here you can see the image of the iris flower so the iris versicolor will look like this the iris virginica will look like this the iris set of size look like looking like this okay so from this we are going to predict the how much accurate is our model so here you can see the measurements what i have explained here that is shown in the image so this is this is nothing but the sepal length and the sepal width and this is nothing but the petal length and the petal width so like this we are going to analyze our problem so i hope Till, till now we have no doubts regarding the understanding of the problem and the class, which type of problem and the input attributes, output, output, output attributes. So let us move further. So though then, uh, then comes the first part of the program. It is the loading of the libraries or we can see it as the importing of the libraries. Libraries are nothing but the, some standard tools which are designed by the data scientists so we are importing that here for our some uh, output predictions so here first we need to import all the libraries which are required i am going to explain you the one by one what the 
function of the each library. So first one is the pandas. Pandas is nothing but the library which is from uh, which is a module which is which is a library of the you know SciPy. Okay, we are importing read CSV here. Okay, the our file what we are loading the data set is is of the CSV file. It may be either CSV or it may be a Excel file. So here our file is in CSV form. You can see. Okay, this is of a CSV file. That is CSV is nothing but the comma separated values. So we are importing here a read CSV. So if it is a Excel file, means we are to write it as a read Excel. Here. So that is the difference between their uh, Excel and the comma separated values. Okay, we are importing pandas here for. Uh, you know uh, the data framing and for loading of the data set that is the function of pandas and then next will be the from tool plotting we are importing scatter matrix the scatter plot matrix will come under the visualization of the graph so in this we are going to plot some graph with respect to input and the output variables while uh, uh, in the in the upcoming uh, you are going to See the what the function of this scatter matrix. I will show you. Don't worry about that. And next one will be the from pandas. This is also same. So uh, it will show some warning message. So I am using both here. Any one if you use, it's okay, no problem. So next is the matplot library. We are importing the pi plot. So for the plotting of the graphs, this matplot library is very important. So we are importing here from the matplot library. So Next one will be the train and test fit. So in our module, we are going to split our data set for the training and the testing purpose. So we are importing that from the SQL library. Okay. And next will be the K fold. K fold is nothing but we are using it for the you know the folding of the data set. That means K fold means if I want to explain you means uh, consist if uh, consider it our uh, data set is having of the hundred number of values. So, if you use the k fold means it is going to fold it as if you use k value as a 10 means it is going to fold the value for the 10 times. So, from that it is going to increase the accuracy. So, for that reason we are using here k fold. Okay, next is the cross validation score. Cross validation score is nothing but a k fold score only. It is going to predict the value. And this cross validation score, if you use the k value as 10, means it is going to split the data set into 10 times, and each each you know one data set is going to uh, split into again nine times, and the tenth prediction is going to place the values what it has split it. So that is the important thing. So in the uh, co comparison of the algorithm we are using it in the code, I will show you. Okay, next one is the classification report. It is very important for the prediction of the class. Yeah, how much accuracy we got, how much the recall f1 square, and how much we have got the total number of uh, uh, you know values. That is that is the called as the classification report. And then confusion matrix nothing but you know, it is a matrix which will show the true positive values and the true negative, false positive and false negative. So for that reason we are importing from that. So his accuracy score is nothing but the predicting of the accuracy. So for that reason, we are importing the accuracy score. The next comes is the logistic regression. That is the nothing but the uh, uh, you know uh, algorithm. That is a linear algorithm, I can say. So we are now you are importing some algorithms so that we need to check which algorithm suits best for the our this predicting data set. So we are importing here logistic regression. And next is the Tishan tree classifier and next is the k neighbor classifier. And uh, this is the linear discriminant analysis. Then from navy base we are importing the Gaussian NV. And this is the SVC. Okay. This is nothing but all are the algorithms. So we are importing here for uh, uh, comparison purpose. And next one comes with the from picker we are importing the dump and load. This is nothing but for the finalization of the um, this uh, finalization of this uh, model, we are uh, importing this uh, dump and load. So
so this is nothing but the python display image means whatever you are uh, seeing the image over here for that i need to import these things this, if i import these things and if i give the path means the image will be displayed and seabird is nothing but an a matplot library only that is nothing but the displaying of the graph it is will be the uh, some 3d graph you are going to get by using the seabird and as if you import it by the sns can give any name here that we are using it in the code so let us run this code and check what happens okay so already the load data set is loaded so if it is not loaded means here some star mark will be displaying so if the star mark is displaying means uh, the still the libraries are loading into the machine so you should wait for some time until the library is uh, get loaded into the machine so i hope you have cleared with the loading of the libraries the next comes is the loading of the data set as i explained in the libraries here we are using the read csv as the prop what we have imported it from the pandas okay here we have given the read csv so same name you have to use here as the read csv so the first line i'm going to explain that is the file name this is the path where my actual data set is located so i need to provide the path where my data set is located so i have given the name of that data set where it is located in my system if it is not available in your laptop means it is available in cloud means you can also give the url path here so it is going to load from the direct url so that thing also possible with the this in the jupyter uh, notebook okay then we need to give the names here that is the four input attributes name and as well as the one output attribute name so these are the four names petal and sepal and sepal with petal and and the petal with and finally with the class that is the iris for circular iris setosa or iris for jink so that thing we need to load into the machine and next thing we need to frame the data df is nothing but the framing of the data frame it is user which you can give any of the names so I have just for the simplicity i have given it as a df so i am giving your uh, name as the read csv so the file name the where my data set is stored and next will the names that is this one okay after this we need to run the code okay so no error means uh, the data set is loaded if you want to check the error means i will just remove this thing now i will try to run so you can see this will display the image code so let us close this thing and we'll see what happens okay this is uh, this is what we can learn how we can